If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So, sorry, no live stream this week. Uh, this is going to be just, uh, you can think of it like an extra video for context-free grammars. So, those are the things that we've been talking about. And what I want to do here is to, uh, yeah, what I want to do is to talk about some things about context-free grammars, some definitions, and some things that will actually be really important uh, moving forward. So what we had in the context for grammar is we had a set of variables. We have a terminal set, or we just call them terminals. We also had a set of rules. And we have a start variable. So this is the start variable. And every rule is going to be of the form some variable a goes to x and so a is a variable a single variable nothing else and x is any combo of terminals and variables so any combination whatsoever i can i can have the empty string i can have a single variable i can have a bunch of other things okay so uh, let's look at a particular example. So uh, this is the example that we talked about before, which is the context-free grammar for 0 to the n, 1 to the n, that famous non-regular language. And let's say that we wanted to make, um, for example, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay? So then uh, what we can do, of course, is we can start with s, because, of course, there's only one variable. You have to start with it. And I'm going to apply a rule right here, which means I'm going to replace this s with one of its right-hand sides. I better pick this one, because if I pick this one, then we're stuck. So then I pick 0s1. So then the 0 and the 1 are, um, are, are never going to change, because... Uh, Anything that I replace will always be one variable and nothing else. So then I'm going to apply another rule. we got to apply this one again. So I'm going to get 0, 0, S, 1, 1. And then finally, I'm going to apply the other rule where I'm going to make this S magically disappear. I'm, gonna, I'm a magician. So here we're going to get 0, 0, 1, 1. So... The way that this is actually written, to avoid confusion, is with a double-lined arrow uh, instead of a single-line arrow, which is for the rules. And so each one of these, of course, is uh, a rule application. So each of these, the term for it is what is called yields. So we say that this s right here yields this 0s1 okay um, and that's actually useful for when we're going to talk about machines later on um, we're going to use that terminology again yields one thing yields another and the whole thing uh, across the board the entire thing from a variable to a string of terminals is something called a derivation. Uh, maybe I should write it a little bigger down here. So derivation. And uh, just so that we're absolutely clear on what this means, this means from S we're going to apply a bunch of rules and then we're going to get something of the form X where this is in sigma star, where remember that sigma is the terminal set. So it's just a string of terminals. There's no variables in it whatsoever. So if, if we uh, stopped at this step right up here, the second step, this would not be a derivation because there's a variable in there. Okay, so uh, let, let's look at another example. So... Uh, let's say that we have S goes to, I'm, I'm going to make this up, so AB 
or empty, and then A makes A, S, uh, B, and then B makes little b or S, A. Okay, I, I just made that totally up. Okay, and, and it actually doesn't matter what this grammar does. I, um, th this is just something I wanted to point out. So let's look at this first rule, and let's say that s is the start variable. Okay, so then let's say that I, I pick s, I'm going to replace it with a, b. And of course, um, all we will always be doing is replacing one variable with stuff. I could choose the a variable and replace it with its right side, or choose the b variable and replace it with one of its right sides. I can pick either one. But we're going to, in each one of those would be a possible derivation. So let's, uh, what we're going to be doing here is we're always going to be focusing on the leftmost uh, variable. And you, <laughs> you wouldn't be surprised that this is actually called a leftmost derivation. So a leftmost derivation and what what that is is um, always pick always replace I guess the leftmost variable, and it's actually not hard to see that every derivation has a leftmost one. So let's write that down. So every derivation, if it even if it isn't leftmost. Um, there is an equivalent leftmost derivation, so I should say that has an equivalent uh, leftmost. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna abbreviate it dir. <laughs> dir, yeah. So why is this the case? Um, so if you think about a derivation, all that it's doing in a context-free grammar is replacing one variable with stuff. So if we visualize what's happening, let's say that we want to replace this variable a with some stuff, then if we do that rule application, whatever it is, what we're going to get is something like this. Let's say that a goes to, uh, a to x is the, is the change that we made. We replaced a with x, whatever x is. Well, then this stuff over here is, and the stuff past the A is going to be unchanged later on because I'm just replacing that A with, with a particular um, string. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't really matter. So that means that if I, even if I pick some variable later on that uh, I replace, that is not the leftmost variable, I could have easily picked the leftmost one because, remember, a derivation always ha ends in a string of terminal characters. So at some point, that leftmost variable would have been replaced at some point because we had to get a string of terminals because it's a derivation. Okay, So we can always focus on a leftmost derivation, and that turns out to be really important. Um, because I can actually find different derivations, but it turns out that they correspond to the same leftmost derivation. But um, let's talk about a particular example of a grammar, which is kind of silly, which is this one. So I have a variable s goes to ss or the empty string. So what we can actually see that this can only make the empty string, obviously. Um, so it obviously can make empty string directly. Or what it could do is go the other route where it makes SS. And let's say this S right here, because we're doing leftmost derivations without loss of generality. So I'm going to replace that S, although we wouldn't be able to tell. Um, let's say re we replace that with empty string then we're going to get back this s on the right, although we couldn't tell the difference. And then let's say that this s gets also replaced with the empty string. And we can see here that we have obviously two different derivations, but 
both of them are leftmost derivations, and they're definitely not the same. So these are two different leftmost derivations, okay? And we give this a name, and that name is something called ambiguous. So ambigu ambiguous means that some string that the grammar makes can be made in two ways with different leftmost derivations. So it's not that it has two different derivations, it's that it has two different leftmost derivations. Because uh, leftmost derivations are essentially, if you have two of them, they are essentially different. You apply different rules. Because if you apply the same rules, you'll end up applying rules to the same variable every time. And so you wouldn't actually be different. But if you have two different leftmost derivations, they must have different rules. And this is kind of not a good thing to have in a grammar because what you, uh, yeah, what you have is that you have two different ways of making the string. And if you want to determine whether the string can be made by the grammar, you would have to go down one route or the other. You would kind of have to have some uh, non-determinism here. It's not really deterministic because I could have chosen this side or this side. Although you could determinize it, but on the surface, it doesn't look deterministic. So uh, that that's actually a really important thing. So uh, one thing that we would want to know is something about languages, about context-free languages. So this, obviously this grammar is ambiguous. So the grammar is ambiguous, okay? Not the language is ambiguous. The grammar is ambiguous because this grammar can make a string in two ways. But I could have just used this simple grammar instead. And so this grammar is definitely unambiguous because the only string it can make, you can only make it one way. So what we want to know is, is there a way, first of all, to remove ambiguity. So uh, the question one is, can we remove ambiguity from SCFG? So if I give you a context-free grammar, can you actually remove it? And also related to that question is, are there what are called inherently ambiguous uh, context-free languages. And what that means is that every context-free grammar for it is ambiguous. So they're kind of the same thing. Um, yeah, they're, they're kind of saying the same thing, but from two different perspectives, one from the grammar and one from the language. So the languages can be called inherently ambiguous, but the grammar is called just ambiguous. I, I know it's not great terminology. Uh, don't sue me over it. All right. Um, the question is, are there inherently ambiguous uh, context-free languages. So I'll give you the answers to them and I want you to put the, what your thoughts are in the comments on how to actually show them. So the answer for can we remove ambiguity uh, from a context-free grammar is no in general. And by can we remove, I mean that um, is there an algorithm to actually do that? And we will eventually prove that way in many, many weeks. We will prove that uh, or at least I hope we prove that. And the second question, are there languages that every grammar is, uh, is ambiguous for it? And the answer is yes. There are languages for which every single grammar for it is ambiguous. And we will be proving it on the channel uh, for a YouTube first. So this will be the first YouTube video that will show that there is an inherently ambiguous context-free language and give a full proof of it. So stay tuned for that. 
So hopefully that was interesting. Leave other interesting thoughts about context-free grammars and languages into the comments below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And as always, I'll see you next time.